Now will you notice in verse 4, "...lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side." You see, rebellious and scattered, they're going to come back to the land of promise, but in obedience to God. The women who are weaker than men are carried, like women in these often carried their children on their hips. Now, will you notice verse 5? Then thou shalt see and flow together, thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. You see, the tremendous movement of all peoples toward Jerusalem by land, by sea, and by the air will be an occasion of astonishment. And the multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. Again, wise men, not from the east, but from all over the world, they'll come with gifts of gold and frankincense for the Redeemer. And do you notice here? that they come bringing gold and incense when they come the next time, but they're not bringing any myrrh. Why? Myrrh speaks of the death of Christ and of his first coming. The next time they come, they come bringing gold and incense. Mark, verse 6 in your Bible, rather remarkable verse, is it not? Now, will you notice, verse 7, "...all the flocks of Kedar." shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaoth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. I'll glorify the house of my glory. Flocks are brought to Jerusalem for sacrifices. Now, the sacrifices will be reinstituted in the millennial temple. Now, this may be difficult for some to accept, But the Old Testament, friends, is very definite at this point. You read Ezekiel, the 40th chapter through the 44th, and these sacrifices, I think, are going to point back to the death of Christ, as in the Old Testament, they pointed forward to his death. It'll have the same meaning. 